Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Geo here, and today we're going to be talking about the winter anime season 2020. What a start to the year. I'm not going to get into all the events happening in the world because, you know, that's not really the purpose of this channel. I just want to alleviate the tension, if you will, and talk to you guys about the different shows that I've been watching. I started doing that last year and started covering the uh, seasons. And, uh, I used to do a preview, then a full review, but yeah, whatever. Here's the full review. Uh, the winter season was a little bit, for me at least, just for me, just a tiny bit underwhelming compared to other years. Uh, it wasn't as strong as I would have wanted it to be. The first one that we're going to take a look at is Inspector, or the Japanese name Kyoko Suiri. It is based off a manga and light novel series. This one is based on the story of a 17-year-old Kotoko who has a unique situation. When she was a child, she was kidnapped by spirits called yokai and returned missing one leg and one eye. Since then, she has been able to communicate with otherworldly forces, both benevolent and dangerous. Kotoko is alone in her power until she learns that the crush she's watched from afar, Kuro, has had his own encounter with the yokai. As if being touched by the supernatural wasn't enough, Kuro's personal life is also in shambles. With their shared experiences and understanding, uh, they form a partnership to deal with mysteries from ancient demons to the ghost of an idol. But for a girl who's used to dealing with spirits, winning love might prove to be the bigger challenge. Uh, Inspector just looks vis visually, it looks really interesting. I love the poster and I love the art style, the character designs and all that stuff. It is uh, brimming with personality. And that's what I like in a series where you're able to take a kooky concept, in this case, a character that uh, had a pretty traumatic event and picks herself up and becomes such a fun, amazingly well written and complex character and is able to lead the story in a very fun, creepy and romantic sort of way. Inspector is pretty fun. I, I like the whole idea of it being sort of uh, a supernatural detective show. You've got these two characters bound by fate for very different reasons, but they share a common thread with the whole yokai and um, supernatural aspect. The one thing I will say is that the structure of the series doesn't lend itself to a 100% recommendation on my part. Because when it starts, you get a wonderful introduction uh, with these two characters. It goes off into an episodic event that lasts, I think, three episodes? Or two and a half? I think it was two and a half of them solving a murder case that involves a river serpent uh, deity and then it goes off into the main portion of the show. I was under the impression that they were going to adapt the series a little bit quicker, but instead we have uh, a good eight episodes to a case, and in some occasions the plot just grinds to a halt when it comes to uh, uh, the Steel Lady. Not to say Steel Lady, whatever. It just grinds to a halt, and while the story is interesting and what they're doing is interesting, I think it needed a quicker pace. That, I think that's the only thing that I have issues with the series, that first season. Hopefully it does get picked up for a second one. I believe the earlier episodes were like really highly rated in Japan, so hopefully we do get a follow-up, but it's visually uh, appealing it's got a great cast of characters the story's pretty badass it's just the pacing that i don't think was the very best moving on to something completely different we've got seson academy join the pack i am not going to lie to you guys i'm a fan of stories with anthropomorphic animals i think it's hilarious 
and I've said it in past videos, you can examine human interactions and personalities and uh, do interesting metaphorical takes on them, I guess. It just, uh, having anthropomorphic animals lets you look at uh, society in a different way that in a different fun way I should add. So what the heck is Seton Academy about? It's a school full of animals where thanks to population decline there are fewer humans than any other creature. Gene, an animal hater and the only human in his class, falls in love with Hinohitomi, the only female human, the moment he lays eyes on her. However, he soon finds himself entangled with various other creatures after he reluctantly joins the pack of Lanka the Wolf, the only other member of her pack. This is a bonker series. I love the idea of taking uh, the concept of anthropomorphic animals, but you're having them mixed with human features. It's never stated in the series, but it's obviously meant for us, the viewers, to sort of see the interactions between like a wolf girl a panda girl or stuff like that or a lion so that they're able to talk communicate and mingle with the two with the two humans and it's just a very funny wacky series that reminded me of uh, i guess the anime equivalent of um, my gym partner is a monkey that but an anime form if that makes any sense where you have this um human character interacting with all the animals from the animal kingdom from aquatic animals to uh, ancient species uh, really tongue-in-cheek jokes that i appreciate like the teachers being dinosaurs doesn't get any better than that <laughs> but uh yeah uh, somewhat wholesome in its execution simply because of how charming some of these characters are. Sloth Girl, for example, happened to be my favorite character in the series. I love the running gag that she's so slow that she's she's basically dying in front of everybody because she can't keep up and can't do the things that other characters are doing. Uh, Lanka the Wolf is just pure cuteness and one of the most wholesome characters uh, of the year so far in 2020. So we'll see how that lines up when the year ends. But I definitely liked uh, the wacky, fun, bizarre humor. Uh, obviously, there are some inside jokes if you uh, like uh, animals and you know about uh, the species biology and all that stuff. You're really going to have a fun time with it. Next up, you've got Somali and the Forest Spirit. I actually did, I think it was my very first anime impressions video on this channel. Unfortunately, soon after I posted that video, a lot of world events started occurring and it just, um, I never got a chance to do more first impressions. <laughs> so yeah, Somalia and a Forest Spirit, I absolutely loved it. It's the definition of wholesomeness. It's a world where humans are scarce and to the very point of extinction and on a fateful day, a golem who's the guardian of the forest. He basically monitors everything and makes sure that everything is running smoothly and protecting all the animals and all that stuff. He stumbles upon this little girl, Somali, and he takes it upon himself to uh, deliver her to the humans. However, she, uh, she's, what, three, four, something like that at the start of the series? She sees him as the father figure. And what soon develops is a very, sweet, endearing, wholesome, and entertaining look at a dysfunctional relationship that forms between a human girl and a golem creature. If you watch the series, then you are in for a treat, because it looks great, it looks fantastic. Uh, Somali's just a treat. She's so cute and adorable. Uh, the golem is really well designed. The world is fascinating to look at. It's very dark. It's sort of a mishmash of things we've seen before like uh the sensibilities of made in abyss with uh, right, that kind of world where it's beautiful to look at but there's a, a a thin layer of creepy and and dark stuff waiting to jump at you uh but also mixed with some uh very beautiful designs uh so that reminiscent of a ghibli movie stuff like that so i really did enjoy it and I think if you watch it, you're going to have a fun time. The cast is fantastic, and the story is just uh, really heartwarming. And I do 
wholeheartedly recommended easily in my list right now as one of the best shows of 2020. That's That spot is right there. How the heck do I even begin to describe what the hell is Doro He Doro? Uh, it's a very popular manga. It started a few years ago, already ended. And uh, the, the show, I, I was made aware of the manga by my friend uh, Riley, the Omnibus Collector, on our shows at Omnibros Live, and he wanted me to check it out. And I, I never got around to it, and now the anime started, so I started watching the anime, and it's, it's chaotic, but in a very good way. The animation, I love, I love that people were so upset that Studio Mappa was uh, doing the CG anime thing. People were so triggered and upset, like, oh, it looks terrible, you're ruining this manga, but turns out it looks pretty freaking unique for an anime. It doesn't compare to the grungy, dirty look of the manga, but what we do get in the anime it looks really good. I love the blend of uh, 3D CGI with regular 2D animation, and it's a city that's brimming with personality, although it's very dark and brim, uh, the whole it's called, and a clan of sorcerers has been uh, plucking people from the streets and using them as experiments and all that stuff. And in a dark alley, a man called Kaiman, or though I guess I should say Cayman, because it's a reptile, he uh, wakes up with a bad case of amnesia and a reptile head. So he's trying to figure out what the heck happened and why is his face that of a lizard uh, reptile along the way uh, with his uh, best friend Nikaido and man it's just so chaotic that I cannot recommend it enough it's a really wonderful uh, world that was created with great interesting characters where you have villains that are just as entertaining and endearing as the main heroes and you sometimes switch while you're watching it between who do you like more the bad guys or the good guys they're just as demented on both sides i i i i uh i think uh doro hedoro will be uh quite popular i hope we get a north american release on netflix uh because i i do think more people should watch it and you know make the series even more famous than it already is uh, next up, you've got Interspecies Reviewers, the famous anime of 2020. No other show will uh, surpass the uh, ferocity and the intense reaction that this show had with its fan base and with censors and studios and whoever pitched making an anime out of that manga is a genius. Okay, this is a sex comedy about uh, reviewers uh, reviewing brothels in this magical world, this alternate world where uh, sex work and prostitution is legal. So they go to fantasy brothels like Succubus or uh, different types of monster girls or aquatic beasts or, you know, stuff like that. And it's very tongue-in-cheek. It plays with the tropes of folklore and the characters and the anatomy of these creatures. It's really funny. Also, extremely perverted. Uh, this is like borderline hentai, which was hilarious to me. And the whole controversy with Funimation, them picking up the series without really doing any research, finding out like, oh boy, this is, uh, this is something else, and dumping it. But of course they've already bought the license, right? So they can't really get rid of it. So it's stuck in um, the uh, abyss of unlicensed shows, if you will. So fans were in, a, in an uproar because you're censoring that show. You're not showing it. Uh, nobody's able to pick it up like another company. So it's just stuck. And then you start seeing the reactions worldwide from other uh, streaming services and then <laughs> realizing what the show's about I, I believe amazon pulled it out and all the uh you, several european streaming sites uh and several channels in japan as well it's amazing that that show aired on tv holy crap 
Uh, it, it's it's hilarious, and if you're into that sort of thing, that sort of humor, you're gonna love it. But it's not for everybody at all. Like it, huge not safe for work tag. However, it's done by the studio <clears throat> Passion. And I really liked the animation, like the character designs and the colors and all that stuff. It looks amazing. I love that art style. And the only reason I'm even talking about it was because I saw the uh, key visual poster thingamajig and it piqued my interest because of how bright and colorful and uh, uh, the art style was for the series. Other, if it weren't for that, I don't think I would have been watching the series. So on our, on a artistic point, Interspecies Reviewers is pretty top notch, in my humble opinion. I know, I know, you're probably being all upset and like <laughs> you're into garbage. Uh, sue me. Next up, you've got Demon School Iruma-kun, which I covered on the last seasonal review as it was starting. Uh, it definitely ended on a strong mark. I think it was 23 episodes. It's fun, uh, wholesome high school DxD type uh, series with Iruma being uh, thrown into the school. He's a human. It's in the underworld with uh, de uh, hellish demons and all that stuff uh, because he has the worst parents in all the fiction or in reality. They sell him to uh, a grand devil for fame and cash and all that stuff and this uh, devil Sullivan he wants to have a grandson because he's old and he's always wanted to have a you know grandchild of his own so now he has and he enrolls uh, Iruma into uh, high school turns out this character is the principal of the school so hijinks and Sue. It's very, it's very light, fun series. You're really gonna like the characters. I think they're well developed, and seeing Iruma-kun inspire and motivate his classmates to be better versions of themselves <clears throat> is a fun aspect of the show and the manga. So I'm very much looking forward to season two, which you know got announced and the series. Uh, took off. A lot of people liked it. Also, one of the best openings has to go to Iruma. Uh, I, I really liked that opening. That was awesome. A Sherlock Kubikicho... It's a strange title. Basically, the Sherlock Holmes anime. Uh, it's fine. I like the concept and the reimagining of the Sherlock Holmes franchise, but it got too episodic and too meh for me like the running threads are fine but it's nothing too spectacular if you catch my drift however uh, the animation and the character designs they look pretty cool i like them but it's just okay at best on my uh my level isekai quartet season two much better than the first season first season was fine i liked it i laughed but it was just thing you know I, I it's just a really cool achievement that you're able to take all of the characters from <laughs> the isekai shows uh konosuba rezero uh tanya and overlord and do sort of a comic book avengers-esque event where you have all these characters interacting in chibi form that's really cool but it felt uh like they were s getting into the groove and season two they're, they arrived. It's better written, in my opinion. The introduction of other characters from other shows was a really welcome surprise. And a lot of people were upset, but you've got to realize they're not the protagonist of Isekai Quartet. It's still the... I don't know why I did this. It's still the main four series. You know, the main characters of the four shows I talked about. So that didn't bother me, but season two, much better. And for 12 episodes at 12 minutes each, it's amazing that they took the time to develop a lot of the supporting cast and without losing steam uh, from us enjoying the mainstays and the popular characters. Everybody had a good opportunity to shine and I appreciated that. I thought that was really good and I wholeheartedly uh, enjoyed season two. Room Camp, the spin-off sequel to Late Back Camp, at three minutes per episode. Basically the whole series is like 33 minutes 
it's too short, man. I love the girls and uh, their hijinks of wanting to do the whole camping stuff. It's such a wholesome series. Uh, I was uh, I was really excited, but I, you start watching the first episode, and once you're getting into it, it ends because it's only three minutes. It's a short web series. Uh, they recently announced season two of Late Back Camp, so I'm excited for that. But yeah, Room Camp is just a, a, a little appetizer for things to come, right? Oda Cinnamon Nobunaga. Doggos reincarnated from, um, or I should say, old samurai legends reincarnated in modern times as cute dogs. Yes, please. It's fun. The animation's nothing too fabulous, but it's a fun uh, series. I really liked it. It was uh, wholesome and seeing the ending, one of the best openings and endings, but that ending with the live action dogs easily takes the cake as one of the best anime endings of all time. It was extremely adorable and I loved it. Keep your hands off Eizouken. I think this is uh, has to be on the list of everybody's favorite shows of 2020. It was phenomenal. The deconstruction of what makes anime such a, a great hobby and a great genre for a lot of people for a lot of people is examined in this series. Basically, the three main girls they start an anime uh, film club uh, against the wishes of the school directory because they already had an anime club. But what they want to do is create their very own anime because there's such huge fans of it the characters are fantastically written and a wonderful representation the whole cast is very diverse and it's so cool to see the anime opening is one of the catchiest things you'll hear uh, it, it was just an all-around treat seeing their love for a medium that we love uh, it's infectious and I wholeheartedly recommend watching this series if you want something fresh unique uh, and just wonderful, uh, you're gonna have a fun time. Fantastic characters, the animation's all over the place, it's great and it goes into wacky bizarre territory, but it's great. Uh, and seeing like their developed anime is really good too, and them uh, sort of doing the meta commentary on the animation process, the artists, the producers, the sound, the production teams all that stuff it's really cool and it gives you a fresh perspective on a medium that we all enjoy toilet bound hanako kun one of the most visually pleasing series that you'll watch uh toilet bound is awesome i love that it's creepy but not uh, too scary it's just the right amount of interest it sort of reminds me of an atlas game uh, when they go full out with their uh thing maybe i don't know probably just me but still, uh, I love that it's taking the concept of like uh, creepy uh, folklore stories and spooky urban legends and playing it up with wonderful visuals. And Nene, uh, she's such a wonderful character. Hanako and the rest of the characters are all great. And seeing them interact and how funny the dialogue is and their interactions solid I, I i loved it it's a great series and just on an artistic point of view a, a really marvel of a series i genuinely enjoyed every single episode even if the story you know sometimes it was a little bit episodic in nature i guess but uh the overall plot was really cool plus the relationship between nene and uh, hanako how that gets explored with him of course being a ghost and she's a regular high schooler i think it's high schooler or middle school i don't know it's, she's in school <laughs> but re really good stuff I, I i enjoyed it uh next up uh darwin's game which is sort of an edgier death note mix with elements of battle royale i wanted to like it but i didn't really like it that much the concept is fun and the characters are uh they're tropey at best, but the animation inconsistencies and the overall plot just felt very cliched. I've seen this stuff before, um, but I do like the aspect that it's a mobile game and they're stuck playing it like in real life. And the, um, the uh, only way to survive is uh, by beating and killing your opponents so you can escape the game, I guess. If you die in the game, you die in real life. Like you're 
written off exist uh, of, of existence, I guess. Uh, the art, like I said, a uh, little inconsistent, and I don't know. Seems like uh, I, I've seen this before. But if you want to pass the time, uh, it's a fun little series. I also watched a couple series that I have to admit did not really pique my interest, and I did not finish. That was uh, the Orphan reboot or remake. Um, it's okay. <laughs> I wasn't too interested in it. Uh, Plunderer, I watched like three or four episodes and just didn't really like it. Um, too, um, I don't know. It was a blend of things I've seen before. Uh, Pet, I want to give Pet another shot because it's weird and bizarre. But I can't really give you my honest feedback on it because I, I think I only watched like the first two episodes. Next up I watched ID Invaded, which is fantastic. It reminded me of the, um, was it The Cell? The movie with uh, Jennifer Lopez? Stuff like that, or maybe a little bit of Paprika from Satoshi Kon. It's a mishmash of things and it's very psychological and cerebral in nature. Uh, with uh, criminals going, or not criminals, with people going, investigators going inside uh, criminals' minds and stuff. Um, I do want to keep watching that. I only watched like the first three or four. I, I really do want to continue that, but it's great. I, I liked it. Uh, the Runway series. I watched one episode out of curiosity. Not necessarily for me. I don't really care too much about the runway business but uh, I hear uh, it has a ton of fans and if you want to check that out uh, yeah go for it uh, the characters look good in that series um, I also would like to check out older series when I do this uh, these seasonal things um, I continued watching Black Clover because it's still ongoing the latest season uh, it already caught up to the manga and <clears throat> they got the mangaka to help out with the story to finish off season three so that's going to be interesting but uh, the whole elf um, story was awesome i loved it and i'm really happy that studio piero uh is starting to give black clover more attention a little bit more love because the episodes have improved in the animation uh, the story is really fascinating and i loved that elvish tale it, it really flipped the shonen jump formula on its head or the shonen uh elements i guess um i thought it was uh, pretty clever i liked it and i love the black bulls their their friendship uh is inspiring and really cool uh to me i watched a little bit more about um cells at work because i dropped off like halfway so i'm close to finishing that series i like it uh david production uh, all their anime adaptations are fantastic so there you go uh golden kamui i am finishing season one so i maybe i'll do a video on golden kamui later on please tell me uh galgo chan was a surprise because the premise looked pretty like eh, but i ended up really liking it it's funny and it's embarrassing and uh endearing in a strange sort of way having three girls that are very polar opposites of each other uh and them finding common ground and building a friendship and discussing really uh quote unquote embarrassing topics was hilarious for an anime to do that uh, that was a first i think and I also watched, uh, let's see if I'm missing anything. I watched uh, JoJo Season 4, Diamonds Unbreakable. That was fantastic. And every season I've liked more and more. I, I, I know a lot of people, uh, they say, oh, Season 1 is not that great. It's not until Season 3 where you start getting hooked. I was hooked right away. I really enjoyed Season 1. Uh, all the mythology and characters, the memes and all that stuff. I loved it. Uh, season two was even better for me, and then season three was just a, a testosterone-fueled uh, righteous adventure that I, I loved so much. Uh, and now season four, uh, a lot of people uh, prefer season three. Um, you know, the Stardust Crusaders is pretty legendary, but I, I think uh, so far season four is my best, uh, my favorite, I should say, uh, JoJo season. Everything about it was just great. 
you took your time developing all the characters, giving every, everybody at least an episode's worth of uh, development. <clears throat> the villain is extremely scary, having uh, Kira be uh, an un an invisible force, a very realistic thing, even though it's set in a very bizarre story with unique personalities, superpowers, and all that stuff, I think it was really well done, and it gave you a sense of urgency as to why the characters had to hunt this villain down to save the uh, populace and all that stuff. I watched a uh, science fell in love. It's an interesting concept about two scientists that are very uh, dull and somewhat uh, predictable and very uh, monotone, uh, finding love in each other and trying to prove scientifically if they're really in love or if it's um, a false thing. It's a quirky premise for a rom-com, but I, I, I dropped it. <laughs> it didn't pique my interest enough. And finally, uh, Bufuti. Um, what's the name of Bufuti? I don't want to get hurt, so I'll max out my defense. The famous Maple. I love that it fooled everybody thinking it was going to be an isekai, but it's just a regular series about this girl uh, finding friendship through online gaming and enjoying the game. She's not trapped. There's no real peril. You're just watching characters have fun and interact with each other and playing a really cool um, uh, virtual reality MMO uh, type thing uh, mixed with JRPG elements. And Maple is just the sweetest, uh, most wholesome thing ever, and she's awesome, and all hail. Uh, Maple and her gang, they're awesome. I, I, I really enjoyed it, and I'm so happy that it's getting a season two. It's such a fun series that it doesn't take itself too serious. See what I did there? And just, uh, you know, it just has uh, fun with characters uh, becoming friends and playing a really cool video game. What's not to love? It's like art imitating real life, I guess, for a lot of us. So, yeah. Uh, if I were to rank all the shows I watched, because I, I just talked for way too long, I'm sorry about that, I would say my top five shows of the winter anime season, in no particular order, would be Inspector, Dodo Hedoro, Keep Your Hands Off Eizouken, Toilet Bound Hanako-kun, and for the last spot, I am going to go with uh, Somali and the uh, Guardian of the Forest. Those are the five best shows of the season, in my honest opinion. So, yeah, uh, most of the shows were good, but not like super out outstanding, aside from those five. <sighs> So there you go, guys. Uh, what did you think of the shows? Uh, let me know down below if you saw them, or if you just saw one, don't worry about it. Uh, let me know in the comment section what you thought of the season as a whole. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I'd love doing these sorts of videos. If you want me to review a specific series, let me know in the comment section uh, as well. I'd be more than happy to do this. Uh, I'd be more than happy to do a review like that. It takes me a little while because, you know, uh, it's different from uh, doing a book review. This, I gotta look at the whole series again and make a like a essay type video, so it takes a little while. That's why I don't do them that often. But thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much. Consider subscribing, maybe? Uh, I do content like this on a regular basis where I talk about anime, comics, manga, reviewing books. Very close to 2,000 subscribers, which is insane. So thank you everybody for the support. Thank you once again for liking, commenting, subscribing. Follow me on social media if you can. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And that's about it. I've got more anime to watch. I'm actually planning out some anime specific reviews for a certain series uh, in the near future. So look out for that. So I've got more anime to watch. Uh, I've got to go. I will catch all of you on our next episode.